Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is our December 6th and last 2021 Bay ICT Tech Talk. I'm Olivia Hereford, uh, Regional Director for ICT Digital Media for the Bay Area Community College Consortium. And our, our, our guest speaker today is Ben Weiswinger. He is the Director of Internal Products uh, at Emerson Collective. And uh, Emerson Collective is a uh, for-profit co corporation focused on education, immigration reform, the environment, media, and journalism, and health. And uh, Ben's topic today is uh, technology infrastructure and social impact. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ben. And uh, Ben, I, I didn't, didn't go into your bio. I, I'll let you uh, tell folk about, about who you are and uh, before you get started with your presentation. So. Welcome. Um, sounds great. Thank you so much for the introduction and um, great to see everyone this evening. Um, as Olivia mentioned, my name is Ben Beiswinger. I'm a director of internal technology products at the Emerson Collective. Um, I'll share a little bit more of, of my story uh, later uh, in the evening, um, but I, I guess I'll just start with this is um, I, I really I pinch myself almost every day uh, because of the fact that I get to do something that I love every day um, and something that I know is producing a, a positive effect on the world and the, and the output of my work is um, driving positivity and driving positive impact on, on people's lives. Um, and so I, I you know, I wanted to start with that, and and I think that's that's part of the key things that I wanted to talk about today is is that that is finding that is possible. Um, takes a little bit of work and takes some creativity sometimes, but it's it's possible to find, you know, careers that are both uh, interesting and challenging, and uh, you know, pay the bills and also and, and also can can produce a positive impact in the world. So. Um, I'll start sharing it in just a moment. Um, again, I'll, I'll share a little bit more of my story later, but wanted to, to sort of go over some of the topics that we'll talk about today. So uh, here we go. All right. So for this evening, a few things that we wanted to talk through um, and feel free to raise your hand or, or ask questions along the way. Um, part number one, wanted to talk through what the heck is technology infrastructure? So you know, my role is focused on internal technology products. I use the word infrastructure a lot. So I wanted to talk through what we mean by this and how infrastructure, technology infrastructure is necessary for every organization, whether it's a two person nonprofit or a multi-billion dollar corporation, like having tools that help you understand um, your people is key. And so we'll talk through a little bit of the, the principles and the philosophy there. Um, the next topic we wanted to talk through is just the idea that volunteering can be and is a career building exercise as well as a way to, to, to drive positive social change. So it can help you make, help you be more skillful. I'll share a little bit about how this, you know, took shape in, in my career as, as an example, and I uh, would love to answer questions about that. Um, and last but not least, we'll talk through a little bit about how you can find purpose in your work. Um, this doesn't mean uh, working for a tiny nonprofit. Um, there are many roles and many companies and many organizations out there that can, can help you do good things while also having a challenging and interesting career. So I wanted to talk through some of the, the concepts and the philosophies there. So um, we'll get started and then look forward to answering questions at the end here. <clears throat> okay, so what do we mean when we say infrastructure? Um, I'm really just going to take you through some of the philosophy here uh, and feel free to, you know, consider this, ask questions. Uh, I want to get to some real examples pretty quickly, but it's helpful to have some like scaffolding of thought behind this. But really when we say infrastructure technology tools, we're talking about the, the tools that are built for the purposes of driving organizational processes forward. So this is the systems that exist, not always the sexiest things, not always the, 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 the flashy apps that you might download from the app store, but it's really these tools and these technologies that organizations and companies use to drive their work um, and are used, a lot of times used by the employees of an organization. Um, 
So what are some things that are common ground, some, some key actions that every organization needs, whether it's a tiny organization or a giant corporation like a Tesla, right? Technology infrastructure is necessary for all of these key things. One, every company, organization, whatever, needs to build relationships with their people. Um, again, this could be donors, this could be students, this could be customers, this could be uh, clients. Really, any, any organization is going to have people that are part of their community that they need to build relationships with and hopefully you know, drive some sort of some sort of process forward where they're either, you know, helping to make the sale or they're helping to provide some value to that, to that, you know, constituent in some way. So every other, every organization also needs to, you know, build this community and grow this community with communications tools. Um, and they need to expand the community in order to, to stay afloat. Um, every organization, whether again, it's a like volunteer based nonprofit or, or a giant corporation, they have a team, right? There's an internal team that works there, whether they're being paid or not. And the organization needs to keep that data. They need to keep that information structured and they need to like have a single place to like maintain that team. And last but not least, every organization, generally there's, you know, for better or for worse, we are in an economy where dollars matter. And so every organization or company needs to keep like a clear view of, of the financial picture. Um, and, and other things that are necessary for really any organization to work well um, is a lot of times organizations need project management tools. Uh, they need to be able to ensure that integration systems are integrated uh, and they need to be able to analyze data and extract data. So I mentioned these things because these are actions that are like literally ubiquitous across any company or organization. And in 2021, every organization or company uses some sort of technology tool to accomplish these things. Um, some people might use a spreadsheet, some people might use a Salesforce, some people might custom build something, but these are, these are necessary actions that are like across all different companies and organizations. So let's, give, let's just give a few examples, right? We've got Vans, which makes you, you know, gives you sweet kicks that you can wear. We've got Salamta Family Project, an organization that helps to create forever families for orphaned and abandoned youth. Um, they work in Ethiopia. We've got Tesla, which um, makes probably too fast electric cars that you know you can drive around as needed, right? So vans, they need to build relationships with not only their customers, but also the distribution centers. So they need to have a like relationship management tool that helps them manage all that data. They need to grow their, you know, they need to grow their community. So you see marketing emails from vans. Um, they need to have a, you know, central database that helps them understand who are all their employees. Um, and they need to have like a clear picture of the financial view for them. It's to share with their stockholders, but at the end of the day, they need to know their numbers, right? Salamta also needs to build meaningful relationships with their partners. In this, in their case, this looks a lot more like understanding who are the 200, you know, children or youth that they're taking care of. How are they doing in school? When was the last health checkup? Right. But at the end of the day, they need a data, a data-driven solution that helps them to understand who is in their community and how are they driving impact there. They need to communicate out to their donors about how their programs are running. So they need to use email marketing tools as well. Um, they need to you know, understand who are their who's their team in Ethiopia, who's their team in the US. They need a central place to understand who are all their team members and how do they make sure that those people are supported or else that those people are going to leave and go to another organization. And they need to understand you know, whether they have money in the bank to continue their programs. You know, same thing for Tesla, right? When you go into Tesla, when you go into a Tesla dealership, I went when the, I went into a Tesla dealership the other day, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I put my email," and they're like, "Oh yeah, we see like all these ten different things. Like I had like test driven one of those five years ago or something, right?" And so they know that the reason is because they have a relationship management tool that helps them understand all the data, all, you know, all the data about me, so that they can, you know, hopefully serve serve me or sell me. Uh, better in the future, right? So they they have a great email marketing solution that's connected to that. They have you know tools that help them. So the the point being that 
these are these are key things that are ubiquitous and consistent across every company or organization. And in, again, in 2021, every every company or organization, big or small, uses technology tools to drive this. So how can we visualize this? The way that I think about it is basically this like connected architecture of relationship management tools connected to people data management tools, connected to financial tools, connected to communications tools. And then you have cl collaboration and project management tools. And then, you know, Olivia's talked a little bit about data AI, right? You could never get artificial intelligence or any sort of insight unless you have a clear like data structure for the people that you're working with, right? So a lot of times these operational infrastructure tools are the necessary precursor to do anything that's gonna be more impactful um, from an analytics standpoint. Um, I'm gonna focus in on, on CRM in a second. So I'm not gonna read through all of this, but suffice it to say basically like every technology system that supports every action that organizations um, need to do um, has some pretty clear, like concrete things that they need to do. For me, I've ended up through luck, fortune, or bad luck, um, developing a pretty deep expertise in constituent relationship management tools. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the specifics of these tools in a moment, but really these CRM tools, uh, looks like there's something. Yeah, HCM is human capital management, exactly. Um, CRM tools, Again, the purpose is these are technology tool systems that help to build meaningful relationships with constituents, help to drive a path forward. So understanding, hey, if I'm speaking with this person, you know, are they interested? Is this the first time we've reached out to them? Are they, you know, ready to sign the contract, for example? Um, so driving that path forward or, hey, I'm, you know, working with um, this student, you know, are they in? eighth grade, seventh grade, whatever it might be, right? It's, it's like the idea is that you have records for your people and then you have the key data points connected to them. Um, and it helps to facilitate data structure and compliance where needed. Now, here's some really cool stuff about CRM tools. Examples of these, you see them all around. Like Salesforce, it's like, just to be straight up, there is a lot of effort and dollars put into this space. Um, companies and organizations, more and more and more, they keep on having problems that where the only answer really is a CRM, right? They'll say, shoot, I really want to see all the donors who supported us last year, but haven't donated yet this year, right? The only answer to that, unless you are really good with spreadsheets, is like some sort of CRM technology tool. Um, Companies might want to say, hey, I'd love to, to make a marketing campaign for everyone who's come into a Tesla showroom, right? The only answer to that is a CRM. So the, the, the broad strokes of this is you end up with all of these companies and organizations who are like, great, I need a CRM. They go, maybe they buy the software, right? And then they have it. And then there's no professional to help them get it set up and to help them actually make it work, right? So it's like, it, there's a big opportunity here. Um, and, I, and frankly, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next section, but like, I was very fortunate to sort of stumble into it, but I, I, I think it's, it's something that I always like to share with people is that like, this is a, it's, it's an interesting space. And if you're willing to like look into it, it's something that where there's a lot of uh, pre opportunity. So, you know, you see some of the tools around there. Salesforce just built a gigantic tower, like the tallest tower on the West Coast, right? All because people are so interested in this. Um, there's other tools that are popping up that are really cool that they really do the same thing. Airtable is an example of sort of like a, a relational database spreadsheet type of tool, which solves a lot of the same problems that some of the, the traditional CRMs did. HubSpot has some great CRM tools. The thing that, that you see a lot of times with CRM tools which make them a great entry point is one, a lot of times these are tools that are configurable with like clicks rather than having to use a specific, uh, like learn or use a specific coding language. So you, in other words, you can build something that works for a, an organization or a company without having to take tons and tons of time to learn a, a new like coding language. Someone says, hey, I want this to be done. You say, great, I'm gonna go into the back end. I'll create these fields. I'll link these things up. I'll like drag this interface here. 
now you can do it, right? So it's, it's, it's something where you can build functional products relatively quickly. The other thing I think that's super important, and this is, this is a lot of times the case in the technology space, but I think in CRM um, development and, and build out and infrastructure build out is, is especially true is that development skills or knowing how to build it is equally important as listening and learning and actually understanding the process for folks. So uh, it's just something where like, you know, a lot of times folks who are coming into the technology space you know, maybe you're a great process thinker and a great listener, um, but you know, you don't necessarily have the skills to build something out yet. Like you can really use those to like move the needle forward on these projects. Um, so again, I think uh, all of this, all of this is to say that, that, you know, CRM tools is a really great way to get into um, technology career. It's also very lucrative. Um, you know, they're I'm sometimes have to work with consultants where I'm paying many hundred dollars an, uh, an hour. So um, really this is a long way of saying that like, it's a good space to enter. Um, the data says so as well, right? Like there's gonna be 4 million jobs or so in the next you know couple of years in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, there's 500,000 new jobs this year. So there's a, there's a lot in this space. Um, uh, I will share in the presentation afterwards, some of the ways to get started learning about this stuff. But I think the thing that has been most impactful by far for me is just doing it, right? In other words, for me in my career, volunteering has been a key piece of building my career and my technical skills and the non-technical skills that go into the role that I'm in right now. Um, volunteering will help you, help you be more skillful. So um, I'll tell a quick story. Um, and if you don't want to listen to my story, you can just look at this picture of Ben Stiller. Um, so in 2014, I was like not focused. I did not know what I was doing with my career. I was like uh, basically like teaching ski instructing and like then sitting around and like skiing most of the day. I had no like clear path of where I wanted to go. I was very fortunate to have someone share this opportunity with me, which was, it was a volunteer opportunity. They said, hey, we, our executive director stepped down as a nonprofit that I'd worked with in college. Um, they said, uh, we, all our data is everywhere. We really don't know what to do. We're losing donors by, you know, like we're losing donors by the droves every month because we can't follow up with them to tell them, you know, here's how we're doing and here's how successful we are as a nonprofit. Um, I said, okay, well, I have nothing else to do because I didn't. And I basically just took the time to like sit down. I like looked at all the information. I looked at what they needed. I looked at what the issues were. And I literally just went out and did some research and I was like, okay, well, here's a bunch of options. Salesforce has this cool program for nonprofits. Looks like they offer it for free. And I have just spent about two months and probably 40, 50 hours of my life. And I just like put together something that was really pretty basic. It was a like donor database in Salesforce, connected it to our um, website so that all donations information would flow into there, right? And it had a massive benefit for the organization. Um, that organization I actually formally sat on the board for and has now like had its most successful year ever and is now expanding to serve like you know, many more um, youth than they than they had in, in past years, but it was very impactful for the organization. I mean, our, our fundraising went up 50%, but what I didn't really think about at the time and I sort of recognize now is that I realized with that experience, the things that really mattered to me, I felt more fulfilled after that than I had after any of the past jobs that I had done. And I learned that like, I really love to like put things together and I love to like make, you know, put together a machine that's gonna work for an organization. And also I realized that like, I really need to focus on like things that are gonna have a positive social impact. It also gave me hard skills that I could then turn around and actually use when I went out to job interviews. So like when people said, you know, hey, have you ever, um, you know, managed a project from end to end, right? Before that, the answer was no. After that, the answer was yes, right? Um, it, it gave me confidence. It, and people ask, you know, 
have you ever worked with Salesforce configuration? The answer was no before that. The answer is yes afterwards. So the, the long story short is that like volunteering is an amazing thing to do for your community, but it's, you know, you shouldn't forget about the fact that it's also a like massively important way and a lot of times uh, to advance your own knowledge and confidence. Um, and so just like a few things that come to mind for me in terms of like benefits of volunteering. One, you can meet new people. A lot of times like jobs, careers come from connections. Um, two, it helps you determine your career goals. For me, it helped me solidify. It's like, okay, I actually understand now what I want to do. Right after that volunteering project, I started going out and looking for jobs. I had a job within like two months. And I ended up getting a job at Salesforce um, in the like the salesforce.org, um, like the nonprofit area. It was like the ideal job. Um, it allows you to develop and refine new skills. So it's, you know, you have to be responsible and you have to be, you know, conscious of what the organization that you're working with needs. But the reality is if they, if there's nothing there that's working, and you, you know, maybe you make a few mistakes, but at the end of the day, you put something, you put something in front of them that actually is working, even, you know, it's a chance to like learn that skill in, in a way that's not quite as like risky as, as, you know, if you had to do it on the job with tons of pressure right away, um, makes you more confident. Like it helps you to like actually get your feet on the ground. Um, and frankly, it looks good on your resume. You know, it's, it's like when I'm hiring for people, a lot of times I look for volunteer opportunities. Um, a lot of times I hear people say that they don't know where to go, right? So um, one, a lot of times you can ask your friends, are you on a board, et cetera? Um, there's some really cool places out there where you can go search for technology volunteering opportunities. So I put a link here. I'm not going to go to it right now. Um, a couple of those in the Bay Area volunteer match. There's a group called Fast Forward, which um, has a whole board of, of nonprofit tech uh, opportunities. So super cool places to go. Again, a lot of people say like, oh, I don't know where to go. It's like you can find it. Um, just got to look. So um volunteering um the thing i'll end on and um olivia how am i doing on time looks like i should probably wrap it up in the next couple minutes um so i'll i'll end on on this is that i think i've found this really important nugget of information which is you don't have to trade between making a living and doing purposeful work and that doesn't just mean you you know have to accept uh you know, 30% of the salary to work for, uh, you know, XYZ nonprofit. A lot of people do that. And the, a lot of the best people I know do that. And, and that's amazing. And, you know, that may be where I end up at some point, but there are organizations and companies out there that are, you know, even for-profit companies that are doing things that like produce a positive effect in the world. I mean, Tesla has its pluses and minuses, but like at the end of the day, if one of the causes you care about the most is um, uh, energy and environment, like Tesla's cars are taking gas guzzling cars off the road. It's like, that's, it, they buy that instead of buying a gas guzzling car. And so like, if it's something you care about, like to me, that's they're, they're like working for Tesla and like helping to make that machine more effective is like a positive thing that you can do. There's tons of other organizations. I mean, Salesforce has a great non, you know, nonprofit donation program. Um, and so I, I, my point is that like, I think it's, it's important to find it for yourself, but like you can find companies that like are giving back. Um, I think that a lot of times for-profit companies have powerful initiatives to drive social change. Um, Warby Parker is a cool example that's come up in the last, you know, five, 10 years um, where like when you buy their glasses, they're giving a pair of glasses away. There's a cool company that I've worked with called Cindio. Um, this is a software that, that exists where basically they sell to um, larger corporations and the software, they plug it in with their HCM, their like HR data set tools and it will give them all the information about whether or not their pay is equitable. So it'll look at, hey, you know, here's the average pay that you're giving to um, women. Here's the average pay that you're giving to men. Like, how different is that? And what is it going to take for you to make those equal? So it's like this, and this is a for-profit company, but like the output of that company is amazing things. So um, you know, there's there's many roles that you could find there that I think would be would be super fulfilling. Um,
I've been super fortunate to find the role at Emerson Collective. It's it's one of the most amazing places I've ever been, and I uh, feel super grateful for that. Um, and I just you know want to always encourage folks to to you know take the extra little bit of time to to look and and find the career that you think is gonna uh, work best for you. And uh, if you're not there yet, and you're in something where you're not totally feeling aligned with the mission, volunteer, build the skills until you can can find the one that you want, ideally. Um, so I'll, I'll end with this, and this is not directly related, but um, one of the most successful people I, I, I know gave me some advice, which I always <laughs> like to end on if I'm giving a presentation like this, which is super simple. I mean, people give all kinds of different crazy advices for how to be successful, but this is the one that, that I always found the most impactful and the one I try and live by, which is super simple, is like, no matter what you're going to do with your career is like, do what you say you're going to do preferably within 24 hours. Um, and, and if you live by that, a lot of, a lot of times you're, you're going to be successful. So um, I'll close it out and, and, and open it up for questions here. Um, and wanted to say how much I, I appreciate the, the time and, and the attention. Thank you so much, Ben. I, I have lots of some comments, questions, but I want to open it up to the group here. You can, there's a, uh, so anyway, so Gage, you've got your, well, is that, no, that's a clap. I was wondering if that was your hand. <laughs> okay. Are there any, any questions for Ben? You can come off mute or you can type in chat. I'm watching the chat. Imagine telling your goal. Hello? What's that? Was that a question? Tadiwa, I think it is. Mm -hmm. No question. Okay. Well, one of the things that I'd like to add, the experience of volunteering, um, I, uh, went out on my own bin. Uh, I was in uh, I was in t tech from the 70s through the 90s. And uh, a as the years went by, layoffs were very frequent. And, and, and then I and then I got brave enough to actually go out on my own as a consultant uh, doing technology project management and um, uh, strategic planning. And um, the way I would reduce my anxiety between gigs was the volunteer to work for companies, you know, bringing my tech project management. Um, I think, I don't know, I probably, you know, I, I think Tim is maybe old enough to remember Y2K, <laughs> but I, I, one of the major projects I did as a volunteer was help a, a museum uh, upgrade their systems to prepare for the changes to the date fields. And they brought in new, they brought in new technology. They were using new technology that I had never had any exposure to. And so I learned an awful lot. And then I got to meet the board, <laughs> which were great connections. So, I mean, things like that, I, I, I would really um, just reiterate to those students uh, that right now you can take what you're learning. Maybe you haven't even finished your certificate or your, your AS degree, but you can actually go out and volunteer to use those skills that you're learning and nonprofits. And they'd be very, very happy to very, very happy to 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 get your help. Um, and uh, I really think I have never really thought of encouraging that in our in our uh, programs, but this is a really good point um, because nonprofits need these skills. They need the help. Yeah, Olivia, this is Tim. I just kind of like to second that. And, uh, you know, my volunteering started basically with um, uh, you know, submitting grant applications and things like that. I mean, I was, you know, it was partly due to my uh, part of my day job, but also I was doing, putting a lot of my extra time volunteering as well at the professional organizations like IEEE. Uh, you know, that that was uh, opened up a lot of uh, doors. 
Uh, and then the grant application that kind of led into to teaching, which is now what I do uh, part time. But but even just uh, you know volunteering to be a guest speaker at classrooms and and at for um, instructors, and you know before I was even teaching. And yeah, I didn't know where it was going to go, but I was kind of kind of following a passion a little bit, and you know doing things that were enjoyable and. In the technology field, you know, we have to do things we don't necessarily like. I think that's why they call it work, um, you know, during the day. But then on my off hours, I was, you know, really pursuing things that I had a passion for and, and now still able to uh, to continue that. So I definitely want to second that as well. And I, I think it's interesting how you mentioned to try to get that across to students. I'll have to kind of brainstorm a little bit and how how we can do that effectively in our in our classes uh, across the Bay Area. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we do that enough. I mean, you know, in our role uh, at the BACCC is all about uh, uh, work-based learning and um, um, helping students get to not only, you know, exposure like these tech talks, you know, but also uh, entry-level jobs, internships, apprenticeships. We need to put, put that out there. This is a really, this, this is a really great idea because I really think we need to, uh, add volunteering to our work-based learning uh, basket, you know, that we really need to, to, to help students um, get exposure to uh, community-based organizations that some of which are our partners. Um, so I think we would really, we, this is a really something I'm, so I'm gonna take away from this is to really uh, get that out there. First of all, great presentation. I mean, certainly just as I'm reflecting on my own approach sort of of how I eventually want to transition into the workforce. I mean, um, sort, of, sort of going at it through an inroad of, of volunteering was never really something that, that came up, right? You sort of hear the, you know, uh, you graduate, you get an internship, maybe you get a fellowship, you know, that sort of a, a more traditional um, you know, stance going through than, than perhaps a more, more subversive such as volunteering. I had a really quick question um, about CRM and sort of how uh, the, more of the, um, the, the change in expected job growth is kind of what, what was, um, you know, both re really, um, you know, enticing and kind of surprising to me. I was wondering if you see sort of a similar job growth um, with HCM um, or like human capital management. Um, and if not, is that sort of like society's push to being more technocratic or I mean, sort of what what accounts for that? Um, like what, where are all these coming from? Are we just becoming more data-driven as a society or what, what sort of the, the larger appeal? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great question. So I think, I think there's not as much innovation in the like HCM or like the, in, in other words, like the HR tools space, um, which is why I don't think you see as many technology jobs opening up in that space. I will say though, like if you got to like, certification to work in Workday, I think you would find a job like that. Like Workday is an example of like an HR, HCM tool um, uh, that, that's on the more innovative side. So I think, I think really the thing that's driving the growth in the CRM technology job space is one, I think more, more and more, it's like there's more white space, more companies are realizing they need it and they're buying CRM tools. So I think that there's more innovation and more like companies adopting this as a net new thing within their company. Um, I also, I mean, I think there's another thing, which is I think that a lot of the CRM technologies out there, like they have these sales teams that just like push, push, push. And then like they, the companies end up buying it. And then they're like, I don't know what to do with this thing. Now they basically like, get this like Boeing 747. They have no one to fly it. So um I think that, that that accounts for a lot of the, the need that um, exists in that, in that area is basically this, like there's this gap between like the potential versus what people can actually realize given the staffing that they have right now. And so like they need people to scale up to, to fill that gap. Um, so good question. Thank you. Ben, you said you worked for uh, the, the, not, the nonprofit side sales salesforce.org for a yep. while um does the is there is there a, a version of salesforce specifically 
uh, tailored for the nonprofit industries? And is yeah. that would be now, I'm starting to hear a lot of buzz around industry cloud. Mm -hmm. um, yep, yep. And so, it, I, and if salesforce.org is an example of that, yep. do you see it expanding and really going out there? And say, because, you know, there are a lot of, people don't, don't realize how many nonprofits there are. Mm -hmm. Our nonprofits shore up a lot of what our social infrastructure as far as you know government and local support can do and there are a lot of them out there and i would think there's opportunities for getting to know that aspect of salesforce and then getting out there and and, and using it yeah i mean it's, it's it's a great point so yeah the, the short answer is yes is that salesforce offers essentially like a pre-configured package that like layers on the Salesforce core tool that that makes it more useful or pre-configured for a nonprofit use case um, rather than a for-profit. And, and and that's that's really what it is. I mean, Salesforce loves to market. They're like, oh, we have the financial cloud and we have the, you know, whatever cloud. Like really at the end of the day, Salesforce is just like, it's a customizable relational database at its core. That's what, what makes it a good product. So like when they market these clouds, it's really just a fancy way of saying that like we added some configuration, which like makes the database more tailored towards X use case. The nonprofit cloud really is like, it's the same Salesforce that a company would use, except they have little customizations that let you manage like not only company records and people records, but also like for those people, what household are they in? So it's like a household specific module. And they have these like, instead of like sales, they turn it into donations, right? But it's like, it's the same Salesforce. So is it, the long way of answering your question is like, yes, the, the Salesforce for nonprofit space, I, I think will continue to grow fast. And I know, uh, I know a bunch of people who I've worked with over the years who like, they've actually, they build consultancies focusing on only building Salesforce for nonprofits. Like there is a huge need there. Um, and the output of that makes nonprofits more effective in the work that they do, which makes our society closer together. You know, it's, it's a positive, I think it's a positive space to focus on um, whether it's, it's with your career or with volunteer work. Mm -hmm. Good question. You know, one of the the other programs that are uh, becoming popular uh, here in the Bay Area community colleges that that we're uh, putting together um, what we're calling short duration programs, and uh, a couple of them. One of them is includes a Salesforce certification. The other one is for um, a Google Workspace, yeah. and I would think that too would be something Very. that a lot of nonprofits could really use some help. Uh, in, in because that's something that's accessible, low cost, but they don't have the people <laughs> to uh, to help yeah. them. So see, yeah. I'm, and I'm I'm coming up with these ideas because now I can go to the short duration folk and say, hey, you know, your your folk that are finishing up, if they're not that they're not getting jobs right away, here's a, here's something that they they can do. Totally, and a lot of times people will use Google tools, G Suite, like for a small organization, a lot of times G Suite can be your infrastructure tool. In other words, like you don't need a fancy HR database, just format a Google sheet correctly, keep it up to date. That's your, that's your HCM tool um, or that's your HCM system. So like, yeah, so I, I think that, that G Suite and the Google products a lot of times really can be a great infrastructure tool um, for, for growing organizations. And the key thing is getting something on your resume. Yeah. You know, because one of the, some of the, you know, in, in conversations with some, some of our students, what gets frustrating is they, 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 they finish their programs and they're getting out there and people say, well, you don't have experience. And uh, this is a way to get it. And it feels good to do it. Sure. Any other questions out there? Yeah, Ben, I have a question. Uh, I mean, you know, you're working with uh, nonprofits, which is great. Uh, Salesforce and all these companies, they obviously have to make a profit. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, uh, you know, discounted 
services or, you know, what we found in the past, you know, working at a college, we sure we have the community benefit in mind, but, you know, the philanthropic arms of Cisco or, or Oracle are totally different than the business arms. And, and I'm just wondering what you've kind of found in that area. Um, yeah, I mean, I think every, every technology company approaches it slightly differently. Salesforce's model, I thought was kind of cool where they would, they would donate the product in kind. So they would literally say like, Hey, if you're a nonprofit, you get 10 licenses for zero dollars. That would cost a company like 10 grand a year. Um, so, so that was their models. They would like, they would don't, they would donate a certain amount of product and then they would give the rest of the product at a significant discount. I, I think that was for both. I think that was for higher ed as well as nonprofits that they would basically offer that package. Um, you know, other, I don't, I don't know that other technology companies have quite as like thoughtful of a model. Um, I know Twilio has a really cool model, um, which is very similar in terms of like donating product. Google, um, Google suite has a good model as well, which I think is also a donation model, but I don't know much about the oracles, et cetera, um, of the world, but, um, yeah, I think that, that there's a lot of interesting models out there, no matter what the model is though, is like, never have I seen a technology company that donates services. In other words, they're like, yep, here's Salesforce. And then people get the Salesforce and then they're like, what do I do with this thing? <laughs> you know? So um, I think it's it sort of like feeds back into what we were saying, you know, earlier, which is that like, Hey, you know, for, for students who are out there right now, it's just like skill up on this. And like you, your, your skills are going to be valuable both to like make an impact in your community as well as like making dollars. Um, and that's a good thing, no matter what. Thank you. Yeah. This question might, might be a bit niche -er, Um, but I mean, as, as for people who aren't in the Bay area and I mean, sort of like pandemic affected, I suppose you knew it was coming, but I mean, how is sort of the, um, you know, re remote access of a CRM, um, sort of change the uh, career landscape. Yeah, I mean, I think if anything, it's made it, it's made it a more necessary tool, right? Like when you can't, when you can't tap the person next to you on the shoulder, be like, hey, like this customer just hit me up. I have no idea, you know, like what did they order, right? Like when you can't, when you're not able to do that anymore, it makes it more necessary to have a single point of reference that everyone, no matter what computer they're they're on, can access that information. It's it's more necessary. So I, I think I think we've seen CRM be a more necessary piece of infrastructure um, with the with the pandemic and with folks, you know, a lot of times working remotely. Good question. Any other questions? You still ski? <laughs> or Ben, do you, do you still ski? Ah, uh, yes. Often. Yeah. <laughs> Very yes. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I have a trip this year to uh, Northern Norway in April. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, That'd be so fun. Anyway, yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited. So anyway, again, like none of this would have been possible if I, if I honestly, if I hadn't, if I hadn't said, yes, I'll take this, like, take this time to volunteer and like figure this stuff out. And then like figured out that that's the career I wanted. Like I never would have had the opportunity to do any of this, you know, cool stuff. So yeah, it's just a testament to, um, you know, take the time to, to do to try something, like actually try it um, with your hands on and volunteering is a great, great way to do that. And like it really can, can help um, to, to solidify what it is that you wanna do. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Well, you know, I have a, a, a comment, a final comment on your final comment, Ben, and that is that, you know, do what, do what you say you're going to do and if possible within 24 hours and that. The, re the reason I think that is really important is that builds trust, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, when, you, when you say what you're gonna do and you follow through, the people will begin to trust that you will do that. And what comes of that 
is that you will actually get more opportunities. People will turn to you for, you know, uh, something that needs to get done and they can rely on it that it's going to get done. And I, I, I never heard it put that way. Yeah. But, you know, that's that that's why, you know, that's that's really cool. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Very good. Well, if there's no other questions, we can, you know, give you back 10 minutes, but really thank you all for, for joining. Uh, sorry, one person is joining just as we're wrapping up. Um, but um, really appreciate you uh, coming and sharing this um, great advice that we're going to take, at least I'm going to take back to the region and say, hey, we need to add volunteering to our work-based learning um, opportunities, because I really think that that is um, an incredible way, an accessible way of getting getting experience. So, so Ben, I want to thank you so much for your time. Excellent presentation. I think this is one we really, really want to uh, promote as an archive talk. Uh, and I think probably. It, I will actually use it to justify this a new approach to or adding this approach to our work-based learning strategies. And so I really, really thank you for your for your time. Thank you all. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Those of you that uh, joined on this busy final finals week, I really appreciate it. So thanks everyone. And uh, again, enjoy uh, the rest of the week and have a wonderful holiday. Thanks y'all. Thank you.